Hey everybody, this is Alma coming to you from Long Beach, California. Today is Saturday, July 18th of the year 2020, and this is floss tip number 29. So, um, welcome to you all. Um, welcome back to all of your returning viewers and subscribers. Thank you as ever for your continuing support. I'll never get tired of saying it. <laughs> and welcome to all of you new viewers. And, subs and well, I mean, I would really appreciate if you subscribed. <laughs> um, but I do hope that um, you do like what you, what I have to show you, um, and you find a reason to stay, and to, to continue to follow me on my stitching journey. Um, I also want to um, say a special thank you to all of um, all of you that had reached out to me, um, wishing me a happy birthday, sending me birthday wishes. It was my birthday on Monday, um, and it was just really, you know, it's really heartwarming um, to know that you have friends, not just in real life, <laughs> but in the stitching community as well. Um, I did get a lot of messages on both Instagram and um, a lot of you, as, as you left comments, you would just go ahead and uh, wish me happy birthday, which is really nice. Um, I also had a few stitchy friends that sent me goodies um so thank you um zakia of uh, lady wing designs um she was gracious enough to send me a, a gift card which will be put to good use very soon <laughs> um i've started a ton of things guys i i don't know why it was just this the start itis bug just bit me and i've been starting a lot of things so um so I'll need some floss, obviously. Um, and then also Candice of Slub Lover Stitches. Um, she was also nice enough to send me a birthday card and some goodies. Um, and I, I probably need to show this. This is what she painted. This is what she drew um, on the back of the, the little um, envelope in, she, in which she put the card. This is the horde symbol from World of Warcraft for a view that um, don't necessarily play the game. This is what I'm stitching for my boyfriend too. So um, she plays as well. So I thought that was really nice. <laughs> it made me it made me laugh. Um, and then this is what she sent me. She sent me some. I mean, I want to say it's a lifetime supply of silky sliver because hopefully I won't need any more than this. But um, but I thought the bag was cute. It's like the the cat. The little cat is hugging. It says, um, small black cat, all mine. So, and he's hugging the spools of the silky sliver, which I thought was really funny. Um, so thank you for that, Candice. She also sent me some a, a little pack of needles and some bobbins. So always nice to have plenty of those. So thank you again for that. Um, so since we're talking about methods, um, I did want to address something that I forgot to say. Um, one of my viewers asked me about floss usage. So I'll go ahead and uh, talk about that while I show my, um, not floss usage, but storage and how I set up my kits. So I'll go ahead and, and talk about that a little bit as I'm showing you um, my whips for this week, which are a lot. So let's get to the stitching. Um, the last time I spoke to you, um, I did mention that I was working on my Wonder Woman kit um, for... I'm continuing to do the Full Coverage Phonetics Bingo this month. That's pretty much been my sole focus for the month. And I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I'm really enjoying the progress that I make on the, on the whips. Because um, a thousand stitches is a considerable amount of stitches. Obviously for some, it shows up it shows more than others, but this is what I was working on. This is Tilton Craft's um, chart, but based on Daniel Cordick's artwork. And this is Wonder Woman Warrior Princess. And um, I forget just how far I was um, the last time that I showed it to you. But I was able to get 2,000 stitches because for bingo, if you don't have anything to do with the space, you have to do penalty stitches, you have to do twice the amount. So this is what I have so far. 
Um, so I pretty much did a ton of brown back here, or down here, uh, the gray over here, and then the black. And I also start, started filling in some random spots along the way. I ran out of one of those colors, which again, Ziggy's birthday um, gift card will come in handy. I ran out of the 3371 that's mostly used to fill in here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, as soon as I get the floss, I'll go ahead and fill in that, that place. Um, but yeah, uh, this is coming along relatively easy, I suppose. I hadn't stitched on it in a while, which is why I wanted to take it out. Um, but um, the goal for this particular whip is to reach 10,000 stitches by the end of the year. I think I'm at like 7,000. Sorry for the noise. I'm trying to put this away because if I don't put it away now it's going to be a mess later sorry moving on um as I mentioned I think I think I'm at like 7,000 or 8,000 for this one so I still have have a bit to go but once I finish that space um I was time for yeah, it was pretty much time for my birthday. Um, I'm trying to remember, it seems like so long ago. But I am keeping this in, um, I think I may have shown you this last week. It's um, a project by, by Vicky of Stitch and Button. And um, yeah, I thought it was going to match very well. This is um, another uh, Heaven and Earth Designs chart based on Matt. Stewart's artwork and it's the eternal promise and for those of you that may not be familiar um this is Aragorn and Arwen from Lord of the Rings um and there's actually another fellow stitcher in, in the community her name is Nikki she just finished this um her flustered name is Nikki Crafts I think I'll go ahead and link her below um she just she literally finished this like the day before i was going to start it so that was a huge motivator i was like oh my god it looks so amazing i'm gonna start mine now um but in terms of because i had a, a viewer ask me about how i store my floss and how i get up my my um my projects so what i do is i have a master set of dmc but once i um, like if a, if a whip calls for just the one, the one skein of that floss, then I'll go ahead and take it from my master set. If you know, it's, it's a relatively low number of stitches, but if I see that it's high and that it, it's going to, it, it's going to be more than one skein, at that point, I'll go ahead and kit it up. I'll buy two skeins and I keep them in separate plastic bags. And then while I'm stitching on those colors, I go ahead and just, um, uh, I just keep them in the bag so I'm not like constantly going back and forth to the master set and digging it out. Normally, but I mean with the exception of black, normally I'm pretty good about keeping like one color in one whip so say for this one for example i think let me just pick out i have 340 here i'm not using 340 in any of my other whips which again i did it on purpose um so if for whatever reason i do need it like if i find like i'm you know i'm starting another whip or whatever and i do need 340 then i know that it's going to be here um but yeah, that's I again. That's I don't know if that's if that answers the question. <laughs> um, and I do apologize because she asked me about this, not on my last video, but on my my second to last, the one before. Um, and I even commented back like, "Oh yeah, I'll make a note to mention it next time." And I completely forgot, and I didn't realize it until I had posted it. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, but again, that's pretty much my progress is 
my progress, my process. Yeah, my process um, is I just keep whatever floss I'm using in the bag. Um, and I try to do it in such a way that it's not, it doesn't, there's not that much overlap between, between whips, between colors that I'm using. Um, once I finished the, I didn't even, I didn't even show you. I was like, I show you the bag. Here's the bag. Here's the product image. Here's how I store my floss. This is, this is how far I've gotten. <laughs> it's a morning. Um, it's not even morning, it's afternoon. So that's why I, I, I woke up late. So this is why it's, this, this video might be a little bit later than usual. Um, but this is how far I've gotten. This is a little bit over a thousand stitches because I did want to start the next set of a thousand stitches, but I didn't get too far because, um, and I don't know, I may have mentioned this in my last video, but as I was stitching Wonder Woman, where I had to do 2,000 stitches, it was a lot to do all at once. So, I do have a few more penalty stitches planned for whip, uh, for bingo, whip go, for bingo, for the full coverage bingo, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to like space them out, so I'll do a thousand uh, penalty stitches for that space and then do a thousand stitches on something else and then come back and do the second set of, two, of a thousand stitches to to finish that space but um this is how far i've gotten and this is one of the first times that i've worked with 25 count easy easy grid which is an experience um Obviously, the stitches are much smaller than what I'm used to, so, but I'm loving this. Um, I'm just using it, I'm just doing the, the border right now. So that's the space that I'm using, that I used this for was the um, flowers space. So the border has a ton of flowers. There's flowers all over the grass where they're standing. So I figured this, this counts, this should count. It should be fine. But it's it's massive. Like I don't know if you saw me rolling up the fabric, but it's it's huge. It's really big. So that'll be it'll be a few years before I, I, I finish it. So we'll see. Um, but again, having Nikki finish hers was was a huge was a huge motivator. Um, another my second birthday start. Because you know there's two of us, I do have a twin. So that was for her and this this was mm, for me, for my birthday. Um, this is Portrait of Veronica, this is my first Mirabilia. Um, and I had originally tried to start this back in March, but I didn't get the right fabric for it. So I decided to go for an even weave. So I'm stitching on even weave for the first time. It's just an experience. And I did start this with Vicky of um, the Reading and Stitching Club, I think is her, her floss tube. I'll go ahead and link hers, um, her, Insta her Instagram or floss tube below. But um, it was a small start. <laughs> um, I kind of just stitched on it while we were on Zoom together along with um, some other people and virtual stitchers. And this fabric is from Youthful Hands Sunny Dice, I think is the full name of it. It's called Fairy Meadow. And sorry for the wrinkles, but I I just thought it would be it complemented her the colors in her in her dress really well. And hopefully it's situated in such a way that the light colors don't get too lost. I think I, I did the I think I placed her correctly, but we'll have to see. Um, there is some outlining in there, so I'm not too worried. Oh my goodness. But yeah, this is also my first time on Even Weave. That was an experience. I kept, because I was on Zoom, 
so I kept freaking out on them. I kept saying, these these crosses are too big. Are you sure I'm doing it right? It's it's two over two. It's exactly how it sounds, right? And they're like, yes, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're doing it correctly. You're okay. But I went from stitching on the 25 count for Eternal Promise to stitching on this, which is 32 count, the equivalent of 16 count. Um, yeah, so my brain just automatically wanted to do one over one because that's what I've always done. I haven't done one over one, I did two over one, but I just wanted to do ahead and do the tiny curse uh, process because that's what the fabric tells me. <laughs> so I kept having to remind myself like, no, no, you're doing two over two. You have to do the one over. Um, but it was, it's nice. It was really nice to know that I had people supporting me. <laughs> even if I did freak out on them a little bit. But I'm, I'm really enjoying that stitch though. It's, I can definitely get used to stitching on even weave. I don't know that I'll, I'll probably only do it if I know there's like partial stitches involved. So if I do work on another Mirabilia or something of the like, um, otherwise I mean, for, for coverage, it's just plain cross stitches. So I don't necessarily think it's necessary <laughs> don't necessarily think it's necessary to um, get an even weave for those but you know to, to each his own because I know people don't some people don't necessarily like stitching on Ada <sighs> um, but anyways so once I did finish um, that little birthday start I went back to doing my bingo spaces so the next space I did was my Harry Potter chart. Um, this is Hogwarts at night. Hogwarts castle at night. And the pattern is by Stitching Girl. Um, it's no longer available on her Etsy. So I think there's other sellers that do the same chart. I'm not quite sure. But um, I just keep going on black. Boring old black. A quick stitch though but still boring <laughs> um so this is the edge of the page right here the the bottom row of pages are just partial pages so the plan is to go ahead and do two more pages of black down here and then i'll go ahead and work on the top page so i can keep working on the castle itself but yeah um I forget where I'm at at, the, at this pay, at this with this whip. I want to say sixty-eight thousand. That that number just popped in my head. Um, the goal for the year is to do eighty thousand. I originally had you know dreams of grandeur. Sorry for the wrinkling. I'm trying to put this away. Um, but yeah, I originally had dreams of grandeur and I wanted to finish this this year, but it's, I quickly realized that's not happening, so I'm not... Yeah, I I cut it down. First I went from 122,000, which is how many stitches there are in this. I went from 122 to 100, and then even that was like, mm -mm, I'm not going to be able to do that. So then I cut it to 80,000. Hopefully, that's something I can achieve. And then, that's when the startitis bug bit me. And I got it hard. So, <laughs> um, Tilton Crafts had a sale um, on my birthday. Uh, where if you bought three patterns, you got three free. Um, and this was, you know, there, there was like the price needed to be right I think it was only um, it needed to be $16 so the medium-sized um, charts um, but yeah I mean yes please <laughs> so I got myself a ton of charts and this is one of them this is till death do us part and this was actually a rack um, Candice slab lover stitches um, in addition to sending me the um, the silky sliver and the stitching goodies she went ahead and um, 
uh, wrapped me this. So R.I.K. is random act of kindness. It's when you go ahead and gift somebody a chart. But this is um, Daniel Cordex Till Death Do Us Part. I've always loved Corpse Bride. It's one of my favorite movies along with, you know, Nightmare for Christmas, Corpse Bride, they kind of go hand in hand, but I've always loved this. And I'm, I've always loved the soundtrack to this. So as I'm stitching it, I'm like hearing the soundtrack in my head and it's like super relaxing. <laughs> I love stitching on this already. And you know, to further go with the whole, I, these are the flosses that I'm working on right now. Um, black, again, black is the exception for, for the black. I just, I'm doing individual bobbins for each. Cause I have a cone, so it's all coming from the same place. But yeah, I'm doing individual black bobbins for each piece because it's all over the place. It's all over all over my whips. And this is no different. It's black background. So here's my start. Um, and this is a magpie, magpie minder, needle minder, magpie minders, needle minder. Um, 8,000, 8, 800 black stitches. And then I did start on the first swirly of that background. And Candace, um, cause we did start this on the same day. She messaged me on Thursday, I think. She was like, okay, the fabric is cut and ready to go. And I'm just like, well, we have to start it now. <laughs> um, so she actually stitched like the first few row rows all the way across. So she's got her top edge done which again it's like it's part of the reason why i enjoy stitching this or stitching things along with people is because yes the end result is going to be the same but you get their different different routes you take different different routes different ways so yeah so she's done her first row and i've just I'm just going to, I, I, I was zooming, I was watching TV when I was stitching on this, so I wanted something, because I knew it was going to be easy stitching the first, first few columns, but I did want to go ahead and reach that swirly, so that I could do both ways, like if I do feel like adding onto the image, um, I can go ahead and stitch on that, but then I have the option of just, if I want to do easy stitching, I can just work on that everlasting black black background and that was going to be for the space on bingo there's a space for bugs so the design has a black widow on it and I figured okay that should that should take care of it the next um, whip that I purchased <laughs> and, and started um, is a, again another Tilton Crafts this is fractal energy by Nathan Smith this is a bit different from what I usually do, but I loved, I loved this design in the middle. If you're a, a wow head like me, World of Warcraft, um, this also reminded me of the heart, the heart of Azeroth, <laughs> because it has like a really pretty gemstone in the center. Um, but yeah, I. I, I still thought it was pretty, but of course, it's got all those dark colors and this whole thing is just black in the center. That's gonna be, that's fun. Uh, Leanne from Leanne Stitches comments, she's like, that's a lot of black. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, apparently I hate myself. <laughs> or I think she, she mentioned, I forgot if she said that for this, no, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure she, she's mentioned it for, for this one and not the Corpse Ride one. Hi, Leah. I don't know if you're watching this, but hi. You probably are, because you we, we chat on Instagram. But hi. And this is the first thousand stitches. So again, using this for um, space and bingo. I just used this for the free space in the middle is Stitcher's Choice. <sighs> I might change that though <laughs> because um there's a space for a designer name with t or s so i think i could do it for smith for nathan smith um kim if you're watching this let me know if i'm right or wrong but yeah this is just all one color it's all 939 again just 
put on some TV or chat with people on Zoom. Virtual Stitchers is always a fun time. And yeah, I just let it go. Um, but that was the last space that, was that I was able to accomplish. Oh, nice. Again, sorry for the noise. Um, that was the last space that I was able to to finish this week. So this is what my board looks like now. Um, I've done 10 spaces so far. Yeah, 10 spaces. So last time, last time I told you guys that I was able to finish this row. So I started doing this, but then like also again, once I started those new starts, it was just like, okay. I kind of sort of um, forgot all about anything resembling order. <laughs> um, but so the next space that you see here is trees. And I have COS written here. That's um, for my change of seasons. Which I can show you. So this is this is the change of seasons um, chart. It's by Mystic Stitch, and I'm stitch, stitching this along with Zakia, Lady the Queen's designs. I haven't stitched on this in a while, um, so it does deserve a lot of love. And um, once I do that, I can go ahead and have that second row. I have the fan on, so sometimes papers fly all over the place. It's creepy. Sometimes I'll be on my computer and it'll be all quiet and then you hear rustling. <laughs> I mean, I know. Now I know that it's probably, oh, something probably fell in the living room. Because, you know, I have papers here. But still, the first few times it was unsettling. Um, but yeah, um, once I do, I do finish that and I'll go ahead and have that the first row done. Um, another thing that I did start this week, I actually think I started this last weekend to kind of fill in the space between finishing one um, one thing or finishing up Wonder Woman, but not one thing, not being able to start on my birthday start until Monday. Um, yeah, this is right. This is, and I don't have the. I don't have the image that came along with it. Um, this is the Lakeside Needlecrafts mystery style. Um, this was released in July 1st. It's going to be a 12th part style. It's called Time to Stitch. And this is going to be like a, a mantle top clock. Mantle clock, I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> It's an old style clock, I thought it was really pretty. And then it has like clogs and gears all around it. And I thought that was really cool. So yeah, at this point, like I don't know what the rest of the parts are going to be. I mean, that's the whole point of, of mystery styles. But I was like, I need to stitch that clock. So I love that clock. Um, and this is stitched on a 14 count Ada a hand dyed by Fiona of Fiona's Craft Cottage. This is cappuccino froth. So it's a very light, um, it's it's showing up pretty much true to color. Um, it's a very light, light brown, which, you know, was going for a parchment style. Um, yeah, parchment style uh, fabric. And then I used the same fabric for another start that I did yesterday, um, which was for a, a an, another a friend from Virtual Stitchers. And I have this on my bag by Michelle Brown of Southern Doxy Stitcher that she made for me. But, um, the start was for a birthday style for another fellow stitcher on virtual stitchers. Um, so I actually, oh, yeah, 
I'm like, I filmed in Spanish, so I'm like, where did I put that pattern? This is the Three Things Sampler. It's a Moira Blackburn sampler. And um, she's stitching this as well. So I saw her, I saw it on her floss tube and I thought, I have to stitch this, it's so cool. And I've never, I've never stitched a sampler before. You guys have heard me say that, um, that I'm, I was looking for a good sampler to stitch up. So I was very happy when I was finally able to do it. And I'm also stitching this on the same it's really interesting because like it's the same cappuccino froth um, fabric by Fiona but this one came out a little bit more more it has a lot more greenish tints to it which I mean it it, it happens you know with with dye fabric you don't always get the same the same um, consistency I don't know I don't know I don't know about hand dyeing but um, it still works very well I think with this sampler so I just did the border that's all the plan is to try to at least finish this area and then just start moving this Q-snap bit by bit but um, but yeah um, and it's just 14 counts so I keep telling myself that even though it looks massive I mean it is massive it's also a lot of empty spaces because I'm used to, like I look at this fabric and I'm you know, my full coverage mind says everything needs to be covered and it's going to be a lot of stitching. But it's really not. <laughs> it's a lot of, excuse me, it's a lot of white space. Um, trying to put this away so that it's not causing me issues. So I'm putting the pattern back in its bag. So yeah, um, her birthday was a few days ago, but the fabric didn't get here in time which it happens postal service going nuts but yeah i was just like better late than never <laughs> but that was it um that was my latest start last night and then i have one more two more two more starts planned the first one is going to be for another space in my bingo board and it's another one of the charts that I got at the Tilton Craft Sale. It's a chart that I've, I've always had my eye on. This is the uh, live action Cinderella, um, again by Daniel Cordic. it's a Tilton Crafts design. So I'll be starting this today. Um, to fill in the space for human or human-like features. So, she's human. It counts. And she's so pretty. <laughs> and that's been my favorite remake so far. Um, Aladdin was also pretty good, I thought. I know people had issues with Will Smith as the genie, but I didn't mind him. I actually really appreciated what they did um, to the film. But yeah. That's, that's one start. And then um, the Stitching Book Club has announced that the pre-ordering for the next their next style in the series um, is going to be available on August 1st. And it's Frankenstein. Super excited. Um, she also announced that this is going to be monochrome, monochromatic. Um, so she kind of, you know, she, she released this whole, this whole post about it. And usually she's like, surprise, this is the next one. But now she's like, okay, this is, this is, this is the book, but you know, go here, go to my post, go to my blog for further information. So that's when she explained, she's like, this is going to be a little bit different. It's just going to be one color. So, you know, choose your fabric and floss wisely. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, so Frankenstein is one of my all-time favorite novels. I've been looking forward to, to this for a while and um, Yeah, I still I, I need to I need to pick fabric and floss um, I was on virtual stitchers um, the other night and we kind of started talking about it a little bit and um, I had I had this idea of doing like 
light gray fabric and then like a dark red, like an 814 red. Um, and then somebody, somebody mentioned that that, because a lot of people are, are thinking about doing it like black and red. Um, and so one of the stitchers online said like, yeah, but that's Dracula. And so now I'm like reconsidering, I'm like, do I want to do the, the gray and the, <laughs> and the red? Because she might do Dracula eventually. And at that point, I'll just have two very similar looking patterns. We'll see. I'll see. I still like the idea of the gray and the and the the gray or the red on the gray, even if it's a little cliche. But the colors that she's using is um, a, a green, like a mossy green. No mossy. It's more like dark blue green on gray, which looks fantastic. But then they also considered doing a brown. Because that reminds me of, I don't know, uh, the cover that I have, the, the book that I have has a, a picture of Frankenstein on the cover and it has him against snow, um, but it, it just looks gray, like a gray background and he has darker tones. Um, so I might do that. I don't know. I'll see. <laughs> So that, um, that's not for another couple of weeks. So I still have a, a little bit of time to to get that in order. Um, but yeah, besides Cinderella, I don't think I'll be studying anything new because again, I've already got a ton, a ton of new projects on the go. Um, it's okay though. I've been I've been loving every second, so I don't mind it. Um, yeah, um, I think the next the next uh, whip that I'm going to do for for bingo is um, besides change of season is we do have a space for geometric shapes, and I do have this. You know, I pulled this out so I can have it like readily available. This is Caroline Manning's um, sea glass, so a ton of people started stitching on her designs for a uh, Manic Manning Sal, I think is what they called it. And I love these tones, but I, you know, I started it, I think I put in maybe like 300 stitches on it and then I haven't really picked it up since. So this will be a good way to get it some, some progress on that. But after that, I do want to do a thousand stitches on the Girl at the Beach Mini One, which is a hate chart based on um, Zindi Nielsen's artwork. Um, there's another space for a, a chart that has less than 50 colors. So because that's sepia tones, I think it's like 35 colors total. So it fits. And that'll get me to my 25k um, goal for the year. So that's another reason why I want to stitch on that is so I can just go ahead and check that off the list and put it away so I can focus on all these other <laughs> projects that have started. But yeah, um, I think that's it. Yeah, I think I mentioned that the, at the beginning of the video. I so that's at the at the, the um, downside of filming twice is I can't remember what I've mentioned this mentioned on the first video, and if I mention it here, I'll just say it again. Sorry if I repeated myself. Um, but there's the. Next weekend is going to be the next 24 hours of cross stitch marathon with Jen. Um, and she does have a Facebook group, so I'll go ahead and link it below. Um, but yeah, and she just posted earlier this morning about it. Um, so again, it's just gonna be another, again, just a three day weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you have to stitch 24 hours in that amount of time. So last time I got to 29, I kept going, I kept counting and going. So, I mean, I'll just go ahead and use the bingo board as well, just to kind of determine what I stitch on. Um, Cause last time I did really good progress that weekend. So I do want to do it again, um, which means that I'll actually be filming um, on 
Thursday. I'll be uploading my video on Thursday so I can go ahead and get as much time as possible during the weekend to get those 24 hours in. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it for now. Um, yeah, I'll just keep going with my bingo board for the rest of the month. I'm really liking this a thousand stitch count rotation. I think I'll actually keep it beyond, um, you know, when this month is over, when bingo's over, and we have, we go into August. Cause it's a lot. It's a lot of progress on these, on these, um, on these whips, and obviously depending on the size, you know, a, a thousand stitches on one thing, like my Haku piece, um, the Spirited Away piece, a thousand stitches on that got me a lot done. I pretty much got the bottom, I think like the bottom quarter of the, of the background, of the water done. But then you have whips like my new starts, which is like this little corner, right? Um, so I do like the thousand stitch count goal. Um, I'll go ahead and keep it and then just adapt, you know, once I, I go back to working on magical stitches, homeworks, and enchanted stitching, um, I'll just go ahead and do penalty stitches more often than not. <laughs> so yeah, um, but that, that that's all I do have to say for now. Um, yeah, I went over plans. I, I'm doing plans plans now, I guess. <laughs> um, cause I did go over plans and I did say, um, I did want to let you guys know that I will, I'll be filming sooner rather than later. Um, I also have a whip parade coming, which I'll do, um, probably next week. I'll keep those separate from my floss tube. So I'll film them during the week and probably post them during the week. So we can get, you know, um, what I've done in the course of the last seven months. I wanted to do it at the end of June, but I knew I was going to be starting a ton of things this month. So I didn't want to do a whip parade and then have a bunch of new starts. I just decided whatever, I'll just include the new starts. Um, but I also want to keep the flo floss tube separate and tell you here's what I did this week specifically. So yeah, so um, keep an eye out for those next week and um, or yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'll feel like doing. Maybe I will do it next week <laughs> um, or this week instead of next week. We'll see. Um, I don't know. We'll see what the mojo says. But um, I do thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. Um, I hope you have a relaxing weekend. If you watch this over the weekend, um, have a, I hope you have a, product, or a productive week to continue to stay, stay safe, take all the precautions necessary and always find time to do the thing that makes you happy. So until next time, bye guys. <laughs>